<laughs> hey, <laughs> totally my fault. <laughs> How are you? Hello. Hey. How are you? It's so nice to meet you. It's so nice to meet you. You look so cute. I love your glasses. Oh, thank you. I, you look cute too. I was like, she's so cute. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brianna and Kiana, you ready? Yeah, that's so right. I'm going to go ahead and go live. Okay, sorry. I was like, oh my God, I can't get the the web camera to work. But I think oh. I was like raising, you found me, I think. Okay, I, it might have been my fault. So no worries. I, we're here now. Yes. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yes, ma'am. All right, so I'm going to go live. And hello. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. There's always that awkward moment in the beginning when I'm like connecting to live. Are we there? Are we here? <laughs> I'm Kiana Faircloth. I'm the host of Afternoon Jazz on WBGO every single day from 4 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. And you are tuned into another episode of The Pulse, of course, of course a virtual edition of The Pulse, as you can see, with a brilliant talent. She is a songwriter, she's a vocalist, and she is Peoria, Illinois' own <laughs> youngest inductee into the African American Hall of Fame, Miss Brianna Thomas. <laughs> Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, Kiana. Thank you so much for having me, and it is so nice to be here with you and to meet you. Yay, nice to meet you too. Brianna. Yes. Brianna, Kiana, Kiana, Kiana. <laughs> you know I had to play on our names. Um, yes. Actually, my childhood, my childhood best friend, her name is Tiana. So we had that Kiki and TT thing going. I had, I had a childhood best friend whose name was Kiana. Really? Get out. <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> hey. I hope you guys still keep in touch. Um, you know, I, I knew her in middle school and we kept in touch as pen pals for a little hot second, but she, she moved to California's California and we, we were kids and, um, but we, we hung tight and, you know, but I have some amazing, beautiful best friends in my life now. And I, I'm sure she does too, cause she was a beautiful person. Yeah, absolutely. Kiana's usually are, so. <laughs> I'm just exactly. But I am so excited to have you here. You just have always seemed to be a beautiful spirit. I can hear it all in your voice and it exudes in your portraits. You're just gorgeous, it seems, inside and out. And, and the way it comes out of your, of your throat is amazing. So I'm excited to talk to you. Girl, we've been waiting on this album for six years. <laughs> um, oh, this has been actually, it's its funny you say that. I know it sounds like uh, it's been a six year wait, but truly it's been six years in the making because when I first, uh, when I released my first album, You Must Believe in Love, um, I, I recorded with some amazing musicians that I knew in my community and um, that I, I met like Marcus Printup, um, uh, Ulysses Owens, Riza Printup, um, mm -hmm. Alan Johnson, and Yasushi Nakamura, and um, Wycliffe Gordon, Russell Malone. It was an amazing experience that that left me very um, educated for one. <laughs> I learned a lot. And um, for two, uh, it, it there's a difference between being live and recording. So I, I learned so much in that experience. And right after that, I got invited to the Pittsburgh Jazz Fest. Janice Burley Wilson asked me to come. And I put together this band that I had been playing with um, this, my, 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 my brother and like, he's like my brother from another mother. My mom calls him her son, Conan Pappas. We met at the new school and um, 
he plays keys. He's from New Orleans. And but he has that, you know, I, I when I first connected with him, I was like, OK, we have to work together because he just he understands jazz. But he has like this wider category of music going on with his understanding and the way he expresses himself. And we fell in love with a conversation over Diane Reeves. We love Diane Reeves and we were like, yeah, let's work together. So um, I started working with him right out of college. And um, then I met um, Marvin Sewell and I met Ryan, Marvin Sewell is an amazing guitar player from Chicago, Illinois. Ryan Berg, he's from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And Fernando Sassi, who is from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I put this band together because I had encountered these musicians, Khan and I had been playing with and the others I sort of encountered along the way. And um, I said, you guys, I'm gonna put this band together for the Pittsburgh Jazz Fest. And it was the first time we played. And that was about six years ago. And that was the beginning of, um, man, they inspired me beyond what I can say. I, I mean, when, really when I write in a range, um, I'm thinking of them and- um, Wow. Yeah, so I just, they've been a, cra a great encouragement and they've had great patience with me too. So yeah. um, this has been six years in the making. <laughs> I see. So you were yeah. really busy all that time. Yeah, the band, I mean, with a band, um, it's in the music world, there are so many amazing musicians that we have the chance to encounter and work with. Um, but a lot of times it's just a one-off gig. You you go somewhere and you perform and then you go to the next gig and you perform and then you go to the next, and you might encounter the same people on the same gig uh, or a different gig, you know, but um, there's something, something very unique when you have a group of musicians that play together all the time. And when I found these guys, I said, you are my musical family and we have to do this all the time. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah. But you have experience singing with a man since six years old, from what I understand. Is that when you started singing with your dad's band? Yes. My father, um, I used to be known as CJ Thomas's daughter. There was no Brianna Thomas. It was like, ain't that CJ's daughter? Yeah. Um, he was a drummer and a vocalist here in Peoria, and he played the drum set as well as the conga drums. And um, my mother, although she's not like a, she doesn't play an instrument. She has quite an ear. And I always run all the songs I'm writing. I'm like, mom, listen to this. What do you think? You know, and, but I, I, they put me on stage at six years old at the taste of Peoria. Um, there were 2000 people. And at that time the the cabbage patch and the MC hammer dance. <laughs> yeah. popular, and my dad was like, do that dance. You've been doing it home. I hope there's not footage of that summer. <laughs> So, but, um, but yeah, so he actually, we sang What a Wonderful World and Louis Armstrong's What a Wonderful World. And he was mouthing the words to me as we were going along. Oh and you know, he threw me in some pretty incredible situations. In fact, I was just telling my bass player the other day, the first time that I ever learned um, or gave a go at scatting was my 16th birthday. I had just gotten back from a, a, a tour with this big band I played with. I played saxophone and flute with the Peoria Jazz All-Stars wow. run by Larry Joe Pappage. And um, I came to this little place in Peoria. It was this little tiny nook of a place called Panache. And my dad's band was playing. And I he called me up to sing. It was my birthday. They were having a celebration. And he says, now scat. And I was just kind of like, Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's like that. So, but I, you know, you listen, you know, and, that, and many times I'm sure a lot of musicians that um, many of my colleagues can relate. That's one way that we learn. We get thrown into the sauce and we yeah. have to fall off labor. So, yeah. Thrown into the fire. Yes. <laughs> and exactly. so just a few years after that then if you were 16 you went on to the Betty Carter Jazz Alada program yes I that same teacher Miss Mary Jo Pappage she um came to me and she said there's this program I want you to try for I was I was in high school and 
Um, I, I got all the stuff together. We, we were not, you know, my family, we, I had everything. I had a beautiful, you know, my parents made sure I had everything I needed, but we weren't like rich or anything like that. And I remember I went to a garage sale and got a tape cassette, um, like a, that would record. And I recorded my audition on a tape cassette and sent it in. And, um, I had to do some standards, but I had to write an original and I didn't know it. Mm. That's why you read all of the paper. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I didn't know it until like the day before. Fortunately, I was in a relationship with my very first boyfriend who I was madly in love with, puppy love. And so you have material. Um, <laughs> I, did, I had just I had just written a poem to him and um and so I just sat at the keyboard and I tried to put some music to it. Now, I didn't know what I was playing because I was not, I mean, I knew, I knew what, where C was and I knew what the notes were, but I couldn't write out the chords. So when I got there, I remember Carmen Lundy, who I adore. She is like, she is like the, she is life. (laughs) Um, And so her voice and everything, just her spirit and energy and everything. She, she says to me, where's your music? And I was, because we all come together in this program um, and they bring like four different people on four different instruments from around the world. And Mm -hmm. um, they have us play together in groups to experience one another and um, to hear our music like actualized with other people. Because it's one thing to hear it in your own mind, but the way that people interpret what you do is, it was the first time that I ever experienced that. And I was bitten by the arranging and composing bug immediately. And so, but she asked me where my music was. And I said, I sent it to you on cassette. But what she meant was, where is your sheet music? So my good friend, Alan Johnson watched me play it. I love Alan Johnson. I know. Who does you know, he's my hometown, so I'm like, <laughs> he's like, he was like instantly my big brother. And he said, he took me out into the hall, watched me play it, and he wrote it out for me. And then, and that was my senior year. And then I graduated and I came back right after I graduated. And I went right up to Miss Lundy and I said, here's my chart for two songs that I wrote, and I wrote it myself. Oh, <laughs> I was the beginning, but I wanted I wanted to show her that, you know, I, I meant business and she inspired me so deeply. And that program actually, it was, although I had traveled outside of Peoria um, with Miss Pappage going to Europe to the North Sea and Umbria Jazz Festival and, wow. and, and so on, um, that set the road for me. I wasn't sure at that time if I if it was possible. I, there's so much talent in the world. I was kind of like, who am I? And when I got to that program, the people that I was there with, they um, they made such an impression on me um, on their like in their own selves, who they were as artists, and just the way that that program was. It really put me on a path for it. this is exactly what I'm going to do and I'm going for it and 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 that changed my course so, so that Betty Carter Jazz Ahead program was a blessing yeah, it was way than one it was I um uh, Billy Taylor that year he was under the weather dealing with some health issues and I didn't get to meet him I didn't meet him actually until Jazzmobile in 2009 when I won Jazzmobile and um, he, I, my encounters with him were very brief, but he was another one who was very, very encouraging in the things that he said to me. Um, they were, it was like he spoke to my spirit. And so that program really blessed me and continues to, because I made so many friends and the, you learned that the music, the world is big seemingly, but the music world is very small. Everybody knows somebody and, and, and then you run back into these people again and it's just like you're, they're family. So, yeah. yeah. That's a great segue, the album, Everybody <laughs> Knows. <laughs> yeah. It drops tomorrow, October. It does. And you really have some amazing people behind you on this project. I mean, it really is a testament to how weighty your talent is. You have, God, Steve Miller, he wrote the yeah. liner notes. He Rock did. Hall of Famer. That's, that's amazing. I, um, 
Steve has been a real um, light in my life because, you know, I knew of his, every, who, who doesn't know Steve Miller, you know, fly like an eagle and, 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 and so on, you know, the Joker. And I, I, uh, I, at Jazz and Lincoln Center, he was doing a show and he was doing a show, a few shows. There was one called um, Ma Rainey to Miles Davis. It was a blue show. Then there was a T-Bone Walker show. And um, they asked me to sing on the show with him. And I was like, you know, I, I, I wasn't, I was like me. And so I show up and I go to rehearsal and he was very gentle and very kind always. He's Aww. super down to earth, super duper down to earth. He says, you know, the most beautiful things to the people around him that are playing and encourages us all. There, there are a couple of colleagues of mine that are jazz musicians that I know can attest to the fact that he just, he's very um, kind and generous with his, his way of teaching and being. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but one of the, I, I, to tell you the truth, when I first met him, I was so extra shy. I was up in there and I'm like, you know, before I got there, I was almost like, why am I here? And that's one thing that I, I can say to myself and my fellow people, artists and everybody out there. If you show up to a moment, it's because you were meant to be there and, and you got to know that. And and I learned that in this instance. Um, he says he walks up to me next next to me at sound check and he says, instant greatness. Really? Because I was being so shy. He wanted me to oh come out of the and he he can see what's in. He has a, a an amazing sensibility about music and and um, w what is needed, what's not needed. You know, because you can do too much or too little of everything. And um, well, long story short, at first I didn't think he liked me very much, but he was just such a teacher, and and I was so shy and so you know um, beside myself to be there. Actually, he really was just he embraced me and he is such a mentor and a friend to me that um it has blessed me beyond what I can say and the liner notes are are one moment but um really in my life he's been such a, a beacon of light and to you know every artist and every person that is striving for something um there are people along the way that show us this way and you know, or they show they they show us a way of being, a way of thinking, and he has definitely been that for me. Absolutely. So, yeah, he's on there, and he he does the, he did some amazing liner notes, and then you got my, Brian Bacchus. Yes, yes. Oh my God, Grammy award winning, and this is self released your album, correct? Yes, um, Breath Wine Records. Wow. <laughs> um, Brian Bacchus, I. I've, I've known Brian for quite some time and he does sound and all kinds of amazing things. And he, he saw my band perform at APAP a couple years back. And he said, excuse me, are you about to record? Cause if you're about to record, I want you to give me a call. And, wow. and I was looking like, you know, wow, really? Yeah, that was me. I was like, <laughs> so, so I started working with this amazing woman. I'm sure you know, Gail Boyd. She's yes. my friend. And honestly, when we started working together, um, I can be a little bit, a little, a little slow with my hap it's it's fast in here, but it's slow to move sometimes. But she put the fire under me. She said, We gotta record. And and as we started talking about people, I said, Ooh, 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 Brian Backus. And so I called him and he said yes and came on board and he produced the album and um yeah it was just an amazing experience. Wow. We can't wait to record again actually. We're 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 excited. Incredible. So, well the product you have as a result is amazing. So time timely, you know, and it's it's tell me what it's centered around because the idea of everybody knows is based on basic tenets of life, if you will. Yeah, so I think when we decided to record and um, we had a, a, a catalog of music that we'd been playing and I looked through it and decided, you know, and 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 we decided like what we wanted to do. Um, in looking at the songs that that fell into place, um, there's just everyone knows these truths. Mm 
Mm. Everyone knows it's a, it's a sin to tell a lie. Everybody knows how much forgiveness um, that they need or that they can give. That's, that's something that they know within themselves, but everybody has that place. Everyone knows um, Mississippi goddamn. Everybody knows my foolish heart. Everybody has felt these things before. And although many of these songs are standards that we've heard before, um, one thing that I love to do with my band is to take something and do something new with it. So we have um, done that and there's two songs that are original on the album that um, How Much Forgiveness and um, I Belong to You. Mm. And so I just- I, That one is so beautiful. Oh. I love that one. So beautiful. Thank you. Um, um, that came out of one of those relationships, you know, <laughs> it's a truth too, but, um, but like, it's just, I think when it came time to, we were honest about what we wanted to put on the album and what we felt to offer. And as we looked at the catalog of music, we realized it was just a bunch of things that, um, are just central truths to everybody's life in one way or another. Plus, you know, with Mississippi Goddamn, there's that chant everybody knows so yeah. i just decided i said well that's what we're gonna call this everybody knows these truths and every, you know that's what it is so that's how it happened and in your reimagining of mississippi goddamn you add in you know some of the names of the black people that have been slain and i think that that's so powerful that you decided to do that we and like i'm sad because you know we're still we're still dealing with this in this country. <laughs> you know, the thing is that song, Nina Simone wrote that song in 1963 and she recorded it in 1964, but it was written as a play by play. Uh, and we know this, but it's worth saying, I think a play by play of what was happening in the news. Alabama, that's the Birmingham street um, bombing with the four girls. Tennessee's got me so upset. That's several things but there there were all these they were struggling to vote there were all these sharecroppers that got thrown off their land in tennessee um and then they had to build these shanty towns and then and everybody knows about mississippi goddamn that's medgar evers had just gotten assassinated and she was kind of up to here with it and so she wrote down and, and and went and pinned this song and all of the things that are happening now you know the more things change the more they stay the same you know things find a new way to present themselves or they find a new way to stay. And, and so I just, we, I was invited to do a show in the Botanical Gardens. It was a very powerful show for me and, and the people that I was with um, on stage. You know, it was a, the music of Mahalia Jackson and Nina Simone in tribute to Martin Luther King on the 50th anniversary of his assassination. Mm. And when they asked me to do Mississippi Goddamn, I was very um, hesitant for a, a moment because sometimes, you know, I don't, that's not the kind of song you just want to do. And although the moment was there for it, that wasn't the kind of song that I wanted to do just to do it. And I, I found myself in another situation where I was teaching about Nina Simone. And there were some people in the class that actually listened to that song. And because of the lilt and the rhythm of the song, they felt like it was a happy song and they expressed that verbally. And that was one of the reasons why I was extremely um, hesitant to do that song in the first place at this particular show. And then something caught me and it said, you know, this is a great opportunity to present this song, um, this truth and um, this moment, which is still happening in a way where you can feel good about the fact that everybody will hear it. So we decided to put some funk on it and to slow it down. And I decided if I'm gonna do this song, I'm gonna do it in a way where it is presented and not that, and, and, and no slight to, to Nina Simone at all because we all know, everybody knows still, you know, but like, I just, for my own self, I had to 
and you you just have to feel comfortable doing what you do because there's no no irritation like self irritation when you do, when yeah. you do something. So so um, the arrangement really came out of a desire for people to hear every single word in that song. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact um, that you were ready to do it is a testament to your maturity too. Yes, I have been scared. You know, there were other programs. I, I, I'm with the Jazz for Young People program um, with Jazz Lincoln Center where we go out into the schools and that is one of the songs in the curriculum that we can use to teach. And I was always so afraid. I was like, I don't want to say God damn in front of the kids. But the more you dig into lyrics of a song and the more you dig into a, the spirit of a song, the more you will find your place in that song. And that happened for me, um, you know, uh, I never say the 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 phrase goddamn ever and 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 for my own self in my heart I'm against saying it but in this case um I hear that when I say it and when I sing it and when she sang it and when she said it as a prayer and as a comment and it needs to be made both mm -hmm. of them so I was like, hey, you know, it's, it's our job to, to tell the truth. So, yes, it is. Yeah. Tell me, how has your musical approach changed? Because to me, if I'm thinking back to you Must Believe in Love and looking at Everybody Knows Comparatively, there's something has happened that has shifted. <laughs> like, seriously, there's a more guttural tone to your voice, it seems. It seems like you've lived a little bit of life. Tell me. Yeah. Um, so I think in many ways, um, this sound that, that I have now and the sound that we have as a band, because the band has truly um, helped to shape me. Um, they are all at once for me, a very familiar sound and a very reaching sound. So my dad's band, um, and I didn't realize this, it was kind of slow to realize, but after we recorded, I was thinking about it and I'm like, you know, my dad's band, it was David and Dynamics was the name of the band. Mm -hmm. And there was piano, guitar, um, bass, drums. There was a saxophone player, Dave, who was the leader. He used to play with James Brown. And um, my dad, when t Ike and Tina Turner came to town, he would play drums for them, you know, like, and, and, and several others. And so that kind of grease and grit, because um, I'm a Midwest girl, I'm from Peoria, and you don't, you know, here, it's common to see organ, guitar, drums, or piano, guitar, you know, like, that, that kind of, like, greasy combination it's 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 common to see that and jazz and the blue jazz and blues are not really thought of um separately they're more thought of as like twins and or really like two sides of the same coin mm -hmm. two different sides mm -hmm. of the same coin because you know it's just all in there and so um the sound that we have going now is um each of these musicians understands I feel like they understand me musically and and I understand them musically. And um, we can share in this space where um, we love jazz, but we all grew up appreciating and loving all different kinds of music. Mm -hmm. And um, we all celebrate it and we, you know, and I'm, I'm sure that many musicians feel the same. We don't think of categories. We just think of how we feel when right. we play. My my voice teacher always says, "Sound follows feeling," and um, and I think that's true. When when you cry, you cry because you had a feeling. When you when you ho holler for joy, you holler because the feeling was there. And it's the same in music, which is how music is so far reaching and can. You, you can touch the person in the back of the room that you don't know and that you didn't even walk up to because mm -hmm. sound is there telling the truth yeah. or, or you know and like and I I just the, the the sound that we have going now just all of their different backgrounds and who they are as musicians um, and all of us together that's what this sound is mm -hmm. and it's like I said it's familiar but um, they have definitely taken me to very new places and inspired me in, in some amazing ways. Absolutely. Now, everybody knows, of course, releases tomorrow. Yay! Now, Brianna, you're releasing this album in the middle of a pandemic. How, 
I know that's got to be difficult because you can't really like tour it the way where you usually would plan to do. So tell me about your strategy. What is your strategy now for the release of this? Um, well, I am very fortunate, firstly, to be working with some amazing people um, who are the brains behind a lot of the strategy. I'm working with Gail Boyd, um, Lydia Liebman, and um, I'll be working with some people on radio. Yes, I know. And um, I think my my truest strategy that I can say is that um, when the truth needs to be told, and 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 I don't mean to to infer that my truth is the truth or everybody's truth, but um, I will say that the truth when it is known is irrefutable. And there are many things on this album that we gave with our heart and soul and we told with our truth. Mm. And because of the condition of our country right now and the condition of our society and the condition, honestly, of everybody here, because there's so much fear and chaos and uncertainty going on, not only because of the quarantine and you know this, this unending loneliness that people can experience whether or not they're quarantined with their family or on their own, because it's just been a very isolating time. Um, and and the, the fact that we have to be still right now, there's yeah. um, a lot of that can be so difficult. And it's, you know, we don't notice it when we're just running, 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 and we, we go from thing to thing. But, you know, like when you break your leg and you have to lay there and, and, and just let it heal, mm-hmm. the healing process can be the hardest. And, and I know it seems like we're in such a, a mode of uncertainty, but sometimes things have to come tangled or get broken so that you can find out where the root of the problem is. And because of the state of everything, I was very adamant. I called Gail one day and I said, you know, um, well, firstly, she's, we've been trying to put this, you know, we wanted to put this out, but the way things happen, they, I feel like everything happens for a reason. And so I called her and I said, I really want this to come out before the election. Yes. I wanted it to come out before the election, not only because of Mississippi goddamn, but because I feel like there are these truths on there that um, when you tell the truth, it honors people and it can be comforting. And, um, I think that music has a way of bringing people together. So that was my highest hope. That was our highest hope with this album. It brought us together in such a way of of love and consideration and kindness, which it seems to be really lacking in the world today. Um, It takes kindness and love to, to come together with anybody to do anything. And so, I just, my strategy was to put this out in the hopes that it would unite people even on the grounds of their differences because it's the differences that make us beautiful. If everybody, if every flower on every tree looked the same, it would be boring, you know? So um, thank God we have all these differences out here. And if we can just learn to love and appreciate one another for them and, you know, not be not be threatened or not be fearful or, or, or not, you know, acknowledge and consider that uh, they are there because I think that's one of the things too in this quarantine with, with such silence going on, acknowledgement of one another is so important in keeping in touch. And we wanted to offer this for that. So that was my strategy to put it out in hopes that it would help glue some love back to us i love it so of course we can get it on all digital music platforms right tell us how we can get the music everybody knows out tomorrow october 2nd everybody knows it's coming out october 2nd it's available available on every music platform um itunes amazon title you name it you can get it there and um we really hope that you share it with us we'll be so happy to share that moment with you it will bless us and we hope it will bless you. Absolutely. It's already blessed me. So thank you so much. I was waiting for your next release because I've admired your voice since your debut album. So thank you so much, Brianna. I appreciate, you. <laughs> I appreciate you for being here with me on the polls. Tell everybody where they can find you, website, socials, all that. 
So you can go to um, www.briannathomas.com. Um, I'm on Instagram as Breedful Life. That's B R E E T I F U L L I F E. And um, and you can of course reach out to Miss Gail Boyd. Um, she's been so wonderful. So many of us artists uh, need such a a place to go to. And one of the things that she's been really cool with is her roster of people. We're able to get together with this happy hour every Tuesday and 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 see one another. And I haven't been as present um, as I'd like, but when I'm there, it blesses me. And so, you know, I think just keep in touch with the people around you. Please keep in touch with me. You can reach me. My email is Brianna Thomas um, at Gmail, and you can reach me really at booking at briannathomas.com. And we love you and thank you so much, Kiana, for this opportunity. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Thank you for joining me on The Pulse. Be sure to follow Brianna Thomas everywhere she says she is. And most importantly, pick up Everybody Knows. You won't be sorry. Tomorrow, October 2nd is out everywhere. Thank you so much, Brianna. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. God bless y'all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.